Tyrannosaurus rex is powerful and intelligent, but it's slow, lumbering, and ponderous, a predator who at times must even scavenge to survive. The age of dinosaurs, though, is all about adaptation. And for one carnivorous killer, survival means trading size and muscle for speed, agility, and razor-sharp weaponry. It's a creature that proves that in this prehistoric world, death can come in any size. Deinonychus is a raptor, a bird-like predator covered in feathers. It's five feet high, 10 feet long, and weighs 200 pounds. Tiny by dinosaur standards. Deinonychus is a hunter with a toolkit unlike any animal in the world today. Teeth, claws, speed, it has it all. Deinonychus, you have an animal that has very nasty, sharp teeth and lots of them. And if that weren't enough, it has enormous inner claws on its feet. Uh, it's as if it just couldn't get enough weaponry. Deinonychus is more than just a well-armed carnivore. It's intelligent. This predator can stock a meal, plan out an attack, then take down prey with deadly precision. Even one of the largest plant eaters of all time, Sora Poseidon. Its name means lizard earthquake god, and it can grow to a neck craning 60 feet tall and 50 tons in weight. Sora Poseidon towers over Deinonychus. In fact, its mammoth size is its primary defense. But like all creatures, this giant starts out small. For Deinonychus, Sorpicide would be a great meal, at least the juveniles, because there would have been lots of them and because they would have been effectively defenseless. When Sora Poseidon reaches full size at around 25 years old, nothing can touch it. But this Goliath starts out about the size of a house cat. When these eggs hatch, the young grow fast, but not fast enough. They won't even reach a ton in weight for at least three years. That's three years with the raptor Deinonychus nipping at its heels. There's good evidence that Deinonychus killed animals that weighed 10 times as much as it. And 10 times Deinonychus' weight in raw meat is one big meal. And they could probably feast for a while on, let's say, a three-year-old Sora Poseidon, an animal the size of a hippo. Bringing down an animal 10 times your size takes more than just brains. It requires highly advanced senses. We can tell that it had a good sense of vision, good hearing, and a pretty good sense of smell. In fact, like few carnivores of its day, Deinonychus has a sense of smell so acute it can track prey in the dead of night. Inside the snout are two nasal passages. Like a prehistoric air filter, sheets of sensory tissue were folded to maximize surface area. This tissue contains millions of chemoreceptors, nerves that capture odor molecules. The result, Deinonychus can sniff out prey from miles away. A sense of smell in Deinonychus could alert it to a herd, a family group of plant eaters 10, 15, 20, 30 miles away. And Sora Poseidon, like most plant eaters, are smelly. Unlike a meat eater, they produce huge amounts of waste, feces that form a trail marking everywhere they've been. For Deinonychus, that odor is a dead giveaway. And this carnivore's eyes can clearly see prey from a great distance. A scan of a Deinonychus skull reveals a brain with an oversized optic nerve, the nerve which transmits visual information from the eyes. The optic nerve is very large too, and the eye socket is very large. It's like having a broadband connection between the eyes and the brain. This high-speed link means Deinonychus can react quickly to even subtle changes in its environment. If we look at the Deinonychus eye, it's probably going to be about an inch across. A lot of space in there for photoreceptors. You could see well at night. It would have just a superb sense of sight. 
Unlike a mammal, Deinonychus has no blood vessels in its retina. What we see as red eye in flash photographs. This simple design change creates space for many more rods and cones. More than twice the number of photoreceptors found in the human retina. And all those additional rods means this carnivore can see in the dark. It's as if Deinonychus looks at the world through night vision goggles. This animal had very sensitive vision, being able to actually discriminate objects with great clarity and acute vision. These are the characteristics of an apex hunter, a land shark. Yet highly advanced senses are just the beginning. Deinonychus is agile and can reach speeds of 40 miles per hour. Plus, it has near perfect balance. It would have been swift. It would have been swifter than a human being, certainly. But its real ability would have been agility. It's a sort of animal that could probably turn on a dime. These Olympic capabilities come down to one simple anatomical feature. Its tail. Half the length of its body, it acts like a built-in counterbalance. By flicking it from side to side, it can make a sharp turn at full speed. If we were to look at Deinonychus in slow motion, chasing after a prey item, it would look a lot like a big cat today. If the prey item tries to dart away, it turns even faster than it, swinging its tail off to the side, and can cut it off and intercept that prey item as it's trying to get away. Put all this together, speed, agility, a powerful sense of smell, and a young sauropocyte, even an animal 2,000 pounds in weight, might just be staring death in the face, particularly if there's more than one Deinonychus on its tail. Fight back. The plant eater sauropocyte defends itself by growing to mammoth proportions. This one is a juvenile, but it's almost 20 feet tall an animal on the edge of adolescence, and an animal on the run. On its tail are not just one, but two raptors. Raptors that go by the name Deinonychus. These pint-sized killers work as a team. Deinonychus wouldn't weigh much more than a human being, and when they're attacking, things like Sorb Poseidon, it would be a big advantage for them to be able to act as a group. They're actually increasing their chance of getting a meal. It's a strategy still used today. Working together, lions will take on prey as big as a four-ton elephant, and they only have teeth and claws. Deinonychus employs an array of weaponry more powerful than any creature today. Sora Poseidon's only defense is its massive size. But Deinonychus have learned that nearly any defense can be breached with the right armaments. Like recurved hand claws, almost three inches long, designed to grip into the bodies of prey like a mountain climber's spikes. The ideal attack is to jump up, grab a hold of the prey, position the prey, and then strike. So the arms are to position your body to deliver that killing blow. It could strike very quickly, and it could, if it was attacking a larger animal, use those arms to pull itself up against it. By doing so, it could bring its other main weapon into attack, and that's its foot claw. The name Deinonychus means terrible claw. It's a reference to the hinged bone on its foot. The cutting edge is sheathed in keratin, the same substance that forms a cat's claw. But on a Deinonychus, this claw is four inches long. Like a built-in switchblade, this lethal weapon is sharpened to a point and can flex almost 180 degrees. To keep the knife razor sharp, Deinonychus holds it up off the ground until the moment it's needed. Then, in one lightning-fast swipe, this sickle can rip deep into flesh. Delivered a kicking blow with 450 pounds of cutting force. The key to the Deinonychus killing blow is the hind leg. 
I like it's the strongest organ in the body by far, and ends in a huge claw like a box cutting knife. So that cutting curved knife into your belly, into the target, would cause a fatal wound with one, one flexion. Deinonychus instinctively knows to go for this giant's weakness, its neck. You've got the windpipe there, you've got the jugular vein, which, if opened up, will mean that that sore of Poseidon is dead meat. But death does not come quickly or pleasantly. For a pack of Deinonychus, a kill this big means a feast. And their skulls are specially designed for competitive eating. Its jaws are narrow and lightly built, and its gums are equipped with 70 sharp, serrated teeth. They're like walking piranhas, perfect at eviscerating a victim. If you look at the teeth carefully, they're ridiculously small. They are very, very delicate. They're not killing weapons. A single adolescent sore of Poseidon, an animal more than 10 times the size of its killer, can feed a pack of hungry Deinonychus for weeks. This kill was worth the effort and the risk. Texas, 68 million years ago. Here, death comes not only from well-armed gargantuan dinosaurs. Sometimes, it swoops down from the sky on the wings of a flying reptile Quetzalcoatlus. A Quetzalcoatlus could be kind of seen as a Cretaceous stealth bomber. Air to ground weaponry at its finest. They weren't big, fragile kites. They were big, mean, terrifying bats from hell. Quetzalcoatlus is arguably the largest, most sophisticated animal ever to fly. A wingspan of almost 40 feet holds aloft a body weighing 400 pounds. That's the wingspan of the Wright Brothers' first flyer. Picture a living plane, and that gives you a sense of what Quetzalcoatlus would look like in life. I mean, this is an animal that probably accelerates over two and a half Gs just on takeoff. Just beyond our comprehension. A Quetzalcoatlus is 10 times the weight of the largest flying bird today. Yet this airborne reptile doesn't rely on feathers. Its wings are made of skin. Almost half of that wing is supported by an extended finger bone, a finger eight feet long. A second bone lines the front of the wing, forming a leading edge similar to an aircraft. This aerodynamic design allows for near perfect control on takeoff and landing. But for this flying monster, getting off the ground is the hardest task. Big terrorists were like Quetzalcoatlus, giraffe height, on all fours, and it's got to get up into the air. How's it going to do that? Calling the plains of Texas home makes that job even more difficult. Flat ground, no hills, no cliffs, no special conditions, nothing to help it at all except its muscles. It could still take off from a standstill without any running required. The secret to how this Goliath takes off can be seen in a creature 1,000 times smaller, the vampire bat. They have to spring up into the air. They have to do essentially a super push-up with their powerful forelimbs, the strongest limbs they have, get up high enough that they can get their wings to flap and get off the ground. A Quetzalcoatlus takes off in the same way, using all four limbs to suddenly leap up into the air. Its powerful arm muscles are composed of 80% fast twitch fiber, a third more than humans. This specialized muscle tissue is capable of delivering rapid bursts of energy, energy needed to propel this reptile, a creature weighing as much as a grizzly bear, from a dead stop 